question. We uh, will get to the end. This is okay. Clark. And uh, I'm sitting here with Mr. John McGuigan. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. How are you? I'm very, very well indeed. Um, John is a very interesting character. He helps dog owners whose dogs are pulling and being aggressive to transform them into well-behaved, obedient dogs in only 15 minutes a day. Would that be correct? If you put the work in, yep, yeah, that's accurate. I like that. I like that. Okay. So, um, you've been working with dogs for quite some time. And yeah. uh, if I remember rightly, you you initially got involved because you were taught incorrectly how to work with your, your own dog. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Can you tell a wee quick brief just bit of story just to bring us up to date to let everyone know who you are? So, I started... Um, I got my own dog about, uh, my first dog in 2000 or 1999, um, and then I got a puppy um, a couple of years after that. And I was shown really old school um, training methods using choke chains and dominance based training, and I ended up really wrecking my dogs, both of them, through those methods. And then I, I was put on to a more um, progressive approach. Uh, to training and that was probably about 10 years ago and after I started going on that path I just started learning more about it and um, reading books ten seminars um, and watching DVDs and it just kind of picked up from there and um, gave advice to people and then they were asking to pay me and then it was friends of friends and then their friends and so on um, and then I made uh, I've been doing it professionally about eight years now and but two years ago, I took, went the jump to do it full time, and I haven't looked back. Superb! And you've got something like fourteen thousand followers on Facebook right now, and yeah. I've noticed yeah. that you've got a, I was going to say rabid, that's the wrong word to use, but you've got a fanatically loyal fan base. You know, your 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 clients love what you do, they follow what you do, they listen to your advice, and as far as I can see, if they apply what you teach them, it it just works. It'll work if you do it. And the, if it's not working, there's always a reason for it. Okay, so why why is your approach? Uh, because you're 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 a behaviour consultant as well as a dog trainer. I like I like those two separate terms. Why is your approach different to Mr. Bog Standard dog training guy that I can hire down the street? Um, the first thing is that my commitment to um, CPD. So I attend multiple seminars um, uh, every year. I watch uh, DVD seminars, I read books, I keep up to date with people, um, I keep myself up to date with the, the latest training, uh, which is coming from research universities into learning. So this is not coming from somebody who's got an opinion on dog training or a guy off the television. It's coming from people who are studying this as a full-time research um, position the same way as we would study physics or medicine, and uh, I we are con we are absolutely committed to that. Um, and there, are lots of dog training clubs have not updated their methods for fifteen years. And I say to people, if you went to your doctor and your doctor hadn't done any CPD in fifteen years, you'd be running out the door. You know, so just because we've always got results doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. And uh, I differ because, or we differ because we are uh, we try and apply the most up to date scientific knowledge uh, to clients with their dogs in a way that's easy to understand. It's fast, effective, and it's kind. With is if it's done properly with the minimal amount of behavioural fallout to the dog. Okay, okay, I like the sound of that. So tonight we're we're, we're especially looking at one particular problem, which is. Um, Dog jumping up on you or jumping up on other people. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. you've got you've already prepared this three short videos. Um yeah. you talk me through this. Do you want me to put a video on just now or you want to lead me into it? Tell tell me more about this. Okay, so what happened I'll give a little bit of background as well to why dogs jump. Um, they learn it as puppies most often. And uh, most puppies are cute. People greet puppies by approaching them head on and putting their hands out. The puppy jumps up on top of them and then they get petted. So the puppy learns from an early age that they receive some sort of physical or um, verbal contact from strangers by jumping on them. What happens then is the puppy then grows older 
and uh, what was cute in a 12 week old or an 8 week old Labrador is now not cute in a 9 month old Labrador that has been running through a muddy puddle and you're wearing your spanking new chinos that are just out the washing machine so um, that's where it comes from what happens then is that people start uh, either using corrective training so they'll tell the dog no or they'll pull the dog back on the lead um, or they ask the dog to sit when he can't sit because he's too aroused and it then just becomes this big cycle that actually our attention to the dog by telling him to sit by shouting at him by pushing him away that ends up reinforcing the behavior the same way as a, a child who's not given enough attention the behavior of being destructive annoying rude or whatever label you want to put on it becomes reinforced by the parents interacting with them so that that's where problem jumping generally comes from uh, also, there's also a problem with young dogs because lots of dogs don't know where their own bodies are, so they will, they don't realise that when they jump up to your face that their feet leave the ground. And by teaching your dog body awareness about where his front feet and his back feet are, we very often make massive inroads into jumping. By just teaching the dogs where his feet are. So that is a proprioceptive insight, a sense of awareness? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So you want to play this little video, which is a nice wee intro to to what goes on. Let me just um, call up YouTube here for a minute. And so it's only, uh, this video is only about twenty seconds long, or something like that. So this is a, an old friend of mine, Angela. Yep. A little dog, seven month old Alfie. So you see there, as soon as I walk in, he start jumping on me. I know, I see you jumping on me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Alfie's seven months old, and, and his mum is my old um, schoolmate. So I haven't seen Angela in twenty something years, and. Uh, Nearly 30, actually. Uh, and she called me and asked me for some help with Alfie. And uh, so what's happened here is Alfie is looking to say hello by jumping. So that's what he's looking for. He's looking to access some sort of reinforcement from me. And he's learned that the vehicle to do that is jumping. Okay. okay. Now, we've done the next clip that you see. Angela has him on the lead. And the only mistake that we make here is I've not said to have to hold him away from me just now. Okay, so she's on the lead, and that's the first start where we're, we're managing the behaviour. Or sorry, we're managing the environment so the unwanted behaviour of jumping doesn't happen. So if we watch that one. Okay. This is just a few minutes later. Couldn't just hold them back. Couldn't just hold them back. My club was set up. My was set up. So every time he um, sits or puts four feet in the ground, I click and put a treat away from me. It doesn't matter how much he's doing, he doesn't need to sit, or he just needs a four feet in the ground. Add a boy. I'll give him a treat. Add a boy. Nice. 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 You say hello, and he gets a click and a treat again. Lovely. You see how each time I throw the treat away so that I'm not actually Excellent. inviting okay, him into cool. my space. Excellent. Okay, cool. So how, about, how much space was there between the first and second video? How much time between the two? Well, they, they were back to back. Um, we had done one previous training session with Alfie. That was on the Friday night, and I think I'd been up on either the Wednesday or the Thursday afternoon, and we'd done one other training session with Alfie before then, which had done about, about half an hour of teaching him that the click means a treat is going to happen. So every time he has his feet in the ground, I'll click and put a treat down. Um, Your conditioning the, is Yeah that his behaviour causes me to click the button and when I click the button I'll give him a treat. Okay. Okay. That's right. So yeah. the hard part the reason, of that, on your sorry. The reason for 
for, for pushing the treat further and further away? Is that to give him more freedom of movement or to make him feel safe? It's there's with him, he's super friendly anyway. But what I'm actually wanting to do there is if I put the treat away and he eats that treat, he's now further away from me than he was, which means he's less likely to jump on me the next time because he's now six feet away from me. Okay. And if he's now six feet away from me, I can now click and treat him being six feet away from me. Okay. 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 So now that was so the problem. Oh, you go. Sorry. The actual proximity to you or, or to the person is part of the issue because you're right. You're right there. And therefore, you're you're jumpable. You're able to yeah. be touched. Yeah. Okay. So even the way, even with you see in the next clip, we'll put that on in a second. But, but um. Even with him being off lead, if we keep doing this, if I click and treat him being four feet away from me and keep him there by putting the treat four feet or more away from me, he now has got no reason to approach me because he's just saying that this is the easiest game in the world. I just sit back four feet away from me and you throw treats at me. Okay. <laughs> now, this is this is just the start of it. This is the first session that we've done with this, okay? Once we've broken the habit of the dog jumping, we can now ask him to go into his bed or to retrieve a toy for us when we come through the door. Okay. okay. Now, in the space of with nice clean training, which is not that difficult, within the space of about half an hour, we have started to teach Alfie to keep away from us when we come through the door. Okay. And. Of lost train of thought, I was going to say. Okay, so we've started to teach him this, okay? Um, he now has another option other than jumping on us. He can now sit back from us, okay? Now, what the, the questions that I ask, um, and for anybody that's watching this who has a dog that has problem jumping, how many times when your dog has jumped have you had to deal with your dog jumping? So you're already investing time and effort all the time trying to either manage or stop problem jumping and if we take some of that time and have a little bit of planning and a little bit of thoughtfulness then we can get in before the problem behavior starts and reinforce an alternative behavior and that's really what that's the crux of what we want to do i try and teach rather than just saying the barking is a problem or the jumping is a problem or the chewing my slippers is a problem what i will do is i'll provide another the dog with another outlet in order to achieve a similar outcome okay so i would imagine the earl the earlier you can catch the dog the younger you can, the dog is the better that yeah. is to do what if my with, dog's seven years old okay if your dog's seven years old you just need to do more work okay and what I would always say there is, if we use the analogy of you've been driving for seven years and tomorrow I now change the order of the foot pedals, okay, that's now going to be difficult for you to rewire your body because you've already had so much practice, practicing the previous clutch brake accelerator. And if we need it, now rearrange those so it's accelerator, brake, clutch, okay, or some other permutation of that. So what you want to do then is we can use other things like we can use baby gates or the lead in order to prevent the dog from doing the unwanted behavior, which is access to me. Okay. So we can use a physical barrier to prevent that and then continue to do this. Okay. And it's called the matching law, which is basically, and it's a scientific law, it's, it's, it's laws of learning. A behavior which has been reinforced 90% in that scenario will happen 90% of the time. Okay, so and we're having to address that balance so that the wanted behavior now has the greater percentages. Okay, and once the dog learns that it, it's supposed to keep its feet in the ground and keep distance yeah. with you, is that then transferable to the next person that comes to the door or the next? member of the household if you're only what you want to do is you want to get the dog practiced and doing it with everybody so if it, if it only happens with one person he will only do that with one person so the rule is you're really wanting to do it and round about a do, with a dozen different people in a do, dozen different situations so that the dog starts to discern 
Ah, oh, right, it's everybody that I greet like this. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, one of the other ways that uh, one of my colleagues teaches it is this behavior from humans towards young dogs of my hands approaching you, that's now the signal to sit rather than jump up. And what will happen is now when you train this properly, as you move towards the puppy with your hands outstretched, the dog will now sit down and wait until you pet them. Okay. And that can be done in a very similar way to what we've just done there. So how long would it take me, if I was walking away from this webinar tonight and applying yeah. this to my doggy yeah. now, how long do you think it would take for me to see a measurable difference? You would see measure if you did this properly. You would see measurable distance. You would see a result doing it properly within ten minutes easily. Oh. Oh. But if you go back in tomorrow, if you go in tomorrow, you have to then do it again. So it's things like being prepared to walk through the door already armed with your treats or whatever, or if some your your guests are coming in, be ready to have your dog on the lead. You know. And I'll be ready for that so that we're not firefighting. But actually, what I always think with problem behaviours is what we do is we sm fit smoke detectors. We don't put out fires. I like that. Yeah, it's prevention, not cure. Um, yeah. So talk, yeah. talk, talk me through the exact sequence. Is it is it clicker first, then they respond by sitting down or putting their feet in the ground, then they get the treat? Okay, yeah, so it's called SMART training, C, mark, and reinforce training. Okay, SMART. Okay, so you see the behavior you like, you mark it with the clicker or with the word, good, or yes, and then you reinforce it. Okay, and if you get that sequence well enough, if you, you just you observe the behavior that you like, you mark it and you reinforce it, that's the behavior that's now more likely to happen. And the treat is the reinforcement. Yes, some dogs don't don't like treats. So what you could use is you could use, you'd use a toy. Okay. And um, what I do with my dog is I've had my new dog since December, and the first thing that I do when I go through the door is I get down on my knees and give him access to me while and say hello to him. So what he wants to do is he wants access to my face to jump up and say hi, and what I do is I get down and say to him. I'll give you that access and I'll say hi to you, okay? And he, I'm giving him what he wants, but he starts learning it. That, this, me saying hello to him, only happens when he's got four feet in the ground. And it took a few weeks of doing that, and now what I can happen is I can walk through the door, walk into the kitchen, unpack my stuff, so take put my car keys down and take my jacket off, and then I can say hello to him. Okay, but I started by getting a little bit of what I wanted and then gradually getting the, the, the whole picture. It doesn't take long if you're consistent. Right, okay, and, and you're literally getting down to his level. Yeah. yeah. The only reason he's trying to come up is because that's the level you're at and he's, yeah. he's trying to come yeah. to you. So if you get it at him, it's like talking to a yeah. small child, you know, I was always, I always, always taught Absolutely. to kneel down Absolutely. and look the kid in the eye, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. Getting, you know, looming over this poor wee guy and uh, yeah. it's the same thing. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so what's in the third video? So the third video is basically very similar to the second one, but Alfie's off leash. Oh, right, he's off leash. Okay, that's will be good. Okay. It's moments later. How long? It's a, honestly, I've gone back out the door, paused for thirty seconds, and rang the doorbell again. Now, that rustling is me preparing the treats. So that's he jumps once, and I click, the four feet in the ground, and straight away, he's because he's already practiced this. That's really good.
That is really okay. Good. Now that's really basic. What we can do is we can teach him that the doorbell ringing is the signal for him to go to his bed. Okay. And then we reinforce him in his bed. But this is just to break the back of it. What with break, break the back of the problem behavior. Okay. It's just we need to get in somewhere and start reinforcing something that we like. And then we can build on that. Okay, that's really interesting. So when you're teaching, because I, I, I love the way you work with people, and I think it's almost as much human teaching as it is dog teaching. <laughs> and I wonder. Almost if, as much. Well, yeah. What are the um, what are the typical hiccups or gaffes that you see the the human making at this point? So you've taught them this, you've taken them through this process, you've taught them the acronym, you've got them chucking treats. Where does it fall down? Where where the, what, what can go wrong? It generally falls down to the, the stuff that I've learned. There's a, a one of my great um, mentors who I've learned from, Dr. Susan Friedman, and Schultz, she's always gone on about antecedent arrangement. So that's what that's the preparation of your environment, okay, or setting yourself up for success, okay. So an analogy that you would use for that is if you find it difficult to get out of your bed in the morning to go to your gym to the gym at six thirty, pack your bag, prepare your protein shake. You know, get everything ready. So the only thing you need to do is get out of bed and put your shoes on and get out the door. Okay, and so that's that's a good that's setting yourself up for success. Okay. Yeah. So what I do is, um, we'll talk about how to um fade the treats in a minute. Okay, because that's all that that's often a concern that the clients have. But I have um a tin of treats at the door. And I have two of them in the so I've got a little balcony out here, and just that way. And uh, I've got a tin of treats at the balcony door, and I've got a tin of treats on my unit across here. Which means that if the balcony door is open of an evening, and I hear people outside, I can go outside and immediately start reinforcing quiet behaviour from him. Okay, so what I would do is. Um, or clients where they fall down is they don't prepare adequately adequately for this for guests coming in. So if you know your guests are coming in, generally people know beforehand that they're going to get a visitor who's going to come into the house. So we could have um, a lead at the door plus treats, and the doorbell goes. We clip the dog on the lead, so we hold the dog back as we open the door, and we now start clicking and treating the behaviours that we want. And over time, we'll have to use the lead less and less because that's the behavior that the dog does in that situation. Um, if your dog jumps on you when you come in the house, then I would have your treat bag, which you keep in the car. And as you leave your car, you pick up your treat bag. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you it's setting that up and actually not being surprised that your dog jumps, you know, because I'll say to people when I go in and see them, how many times has your dog jumped on you? And they'll say, he's jumped on me every time I've gone in the door for the last two years. I say, so we know he's going to do that, doesn't, don't we? <laughs> so if we know he's going to do it, we can do something about it. So setting yourself up for success beforehand. And and that certainly helps. And how we get rid of the food is that you now use praise as reinforcement for the dog. So once the dog's got in a habit of settling down or going to his mat or going to his bed when we come through the door, we walk in the door and we say to him, that's a good lad, well done son, that's really nice. And then we can go and say hello to him there. Because that really what he wants to do is he wants to say hello to us. The food is just helping us get the behaviour that we want. So you're still reinforcing the behaviour of settled behaviour in his bed, but you're using praise to reinforce it now rather than food. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, so um, if someone was uh, struggling to have control over their dog, or, or the way they see it is control of the dog, um, the dog's jumping up and down, they can basically run this process now, based on what they've seen tonight. Um, yeah. yeah. Clicker, could they snap their fingers? Could they do something different? Whistle? Could they do... Yeah, they can use it. The easiest word is, to, is just to use a, a, a marker word. Um, so one of my clients, he uses boom, and that's what he'll say every time the dog does something. He says boom, and gives the dog a treat. Um, you could, you can click your tongue as long as your tongue click now doesn't become a 
to get the dog's attention. Okay, so that's where a tongue flick, tongue flick can fall down. So I would generally use a a clean word that you're only going to use in this instance. Yeah. You know, so a nice um, good, and then you give me treat. But if you're using a marker word, you always have to follow that up with a treat, the same as you do with the clicker. Yeah, yeah. But this is just to part. teach the dog. Okay, once the dog knows how to do it, you, the the clicker or the marker word is a teaching tool. And once the dog knows how to do it, you don't need to teach them. You just need to keep reinforcing it in order to keep that behavior strong. But you could use a word. I love it. What's really cool about this as well, Jonathan, is that um, even if we get this wrong at the start, what we end up doing is giving the dog a couple of extra treats. Yeah. You, you know, that's the worst that happens. The dog gets a couple of freebies, you know. It's not getting shot. No. <laughs> So them, pushing them away, correcting them on his collar, you know, we're not doing any of these things. The worst thing that happens is we give them an extra couple of treats. It's really cool. Yeah, it's very humane, it's very it's very respectful. Um, yeah. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I, I love the fact that um, in the space of 20 minutes, you've basically supplied a step-by-step -step recipe to solve a problem that a lot of people have. Yeah, which is fantastic, and that's that's what I love about your stuff is it's it's practical, it's useful, yeah. it's fast, and efficient. We're not joking about fifteen minutes a day. You know, this doesn't need to take a lot. It's not hard. You know, you can do it on the breaks in the middle of Coronation Street. It's not it's not difficult. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just it works if you do it. It works if you work it. You know? I think the the biggest criticism of this style of training is that it's not as fast as punitive training. Or if we're using corrections for want of a, a, a more uh, diplomatic way to talk about it, but the the science, the the, the experiments don't back that that thesis up or that hypothesis up. Um, it's just that we are, as a society, we are so much more skilled at stopping unwanted behaviour. You know, telling people no, stop doing that. And we're actually not that skilled at reinforcing behaviours that we want. So it, it's not quicker. It's just that if we understand what the, the animal or what the person is looking to achieve by their behaviour, we can provide that through a different behaviour. Awesome. I love it. Love, love. And when you teach this in a live format, like in a workshop to, or, a, or a seminar kind of format, um, what kind of feedback do you get? What kind of what results do you hear? Um, the biggest thing is that, that people go, I can actually do this, it's nice and clean, it's easy, and I don't have to give my, my dog a hard to do it. It takes the pressure off of both them and their dog, and they can now actually start liking their dog again, because it's not that they, do, they don't like their dog, it's that they don't like the behaviours that the dog is doing, and that then affects how they see their dog. So that's what people tell me, is that they see this, very often, oh, my dog's actually really cool. Yeah, your dog's really cool. You know, he just needs help getting there. You know, so it, it's that, that's the nicest thing for me, and that's what people tend to give me feedback about is that it's um, they can actually start liking the dog again. I like that a lot. I always remember hearing about uh, working with children, it was always criticize the behavior, don't criticize the identity. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's not that they're a bad kid. It's that they've got a, like they're a good kid with a bad behavior, or I'm not. And the behavior, behavior. Yeah, and that behavior only happens under certain circumstances. Yeah. And that behavior is looking to access an outcome. And by looking at those two things, we can then change that behavior. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Fantastic. Okay. Um. So we're going to do a number of these. Uh, with different topics that we know are kind of common, frequent issues that, that bug dog owners. Um, if someone wanted to get in touch with you at the moment, uh, how would they get in touch with you? How would they reach you? So the easiest way is through my website, which is glasgowdogtrainer.co.uk, or you can email me directly at info at glasgowdogtrainer.co.uk, or via Facebook, um, which is or Glasgow Dog Trainer and Behaviour Consultant. But the, the email is the easiest way to get in touch with me. Superb. And uh, you're a very busy man. You're working with a lot of people. Yep. So I do um, 
we do between, I do around about 20 appointments a week. And Bruce and Gillian also give them, um, between the two of them, they probably get maybe another 20 or so appointments on top of that every few weeks. So I get bo- I usually get booked about um, 10 days to two weeks in advance. Super, super. And because at the end of the day, the bottom line is people end up with a, a, a better relationship with a dog that they perceive as now being well-behaved and in control. That actually, yeah. the dog's getting its needs met, and you're you're respecting the dog and communicating to the animal the way it needs to be communicated with. The dog's getting our needs met needs met in a way that meets our needs. Oh, I like that. I like yeah. that. That's a yeah. book title right there. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Listen, thank you for your time. I love that. That was great as usual. I would have recorded this so we can replay it at a later date, um, and we'll be doing more of these in the future. Um, any last words, John, before we sign off? No, just train your dog. Just go out there, train your dog, and enjoy it. Love it. Fantastic. Thank you for your time tonight, my friend, and uh, I'll be speaking to you shortly. I'm going to bring yeah. this call to a close. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. See you later. Bye-bye.